Second. Yes, it should be good. Yeah, four or we have a quorum, so we'll start with the approval of the minutes of the last meeting on January 25th. Can I get a motion on that? Second. Thank you, Denise. Second by Joe. Everyone read them, I hope. Any changes? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's approved. And we'll move into uh, recognition, Scar. We got a bunch of them today. Uh, four. And I'm not a math wizard, but I added them up. 100 years of CD Kids Steering Club. And Emily uh, DeVito is going to be the, um, yeah. what do we call these narratives? Yeah, stories. She, she hasn't done too much public reading. Bear with me. We'll do Barry first? Uh, first. Uh, we'll 20. 20? 20. 20. Oh, we got to do 20 or 30. 30. 30. 20. Let's start with Eileen. Eileen was working for her father's company when she saw an ad in the newspaper for an accounts payable position here at CDTA. She spent two years in accounts payable and then seven years as our accounting clerk. And in 2012, she became the accounting assistant. Eileen oversees many of our universal access contracts and lots of bank reconciliations. She is also the financial landlord at the Rensselaer Bank. <laughs> At CDTA, we pride ourselves on innovative technology and decreasing our impact on the environment. And the past uh, year, our accounting department made a huge move to go paper-free, as paper-free as possible, that is. And Eileen was a big part of that effort, so good job. Over the years, Eileen has been a volunteer for many of our events, with her favorite being the Fall Festival, which we're bringing back this year, so good news. In her spare time, she enjoys gardening, growing flowers and tomatoes. She loves to travel, see her two kids and her two grandkids. And a fun fact, she has a twin sister who's here with us. <laughs> it sounds like we may lose Eileen to the open road and the traveling van life in a few short years. She's getting that retirement itch. But Eileen, thank you for 20 years of enthusiasm and hard work. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
sometimes feel we're playing the violin and complaining, you just look to these four people and realize, you, you know, we're doing something right. Uh, and and they're, they're, just, they're just nice people. All right, I got through the highlight of a meeting. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Move on to committee reports, and I'll start with the uh, Board Operations Committee that met on February the 8th. We reviewed the agendas and activities for the committee meetings last week before meeting today. Uh, Lisa Morello uh, joined us and provided us an update on legislative outreach. Uh, the issue on the table is the state operating assistance. The governor's budget proposed a 7% 7, 7 increase, and our state association has countered with an additional allocation request. Carmen and Lisa will continue to meet with legislators, staff, and state agencies to uh, share our message, discuss the ways that STOA program can be fortified. Mike Collins gave the committee an update on the retention bonus uh, pilot program. Uh, it has helped with recruitment, but it has not had uh, as much of an impact on absenteeism. Plans are in the works to modify the program into a quarterly bonus pilot program that would impact all unionized employees. Some more come on that. Uh, we also discussed committee assignments and board officer positions. Our governance model centers around active participation uh, by board members. Uh, I'm asking everyone to think about their work on the board and committees to let me and Carm uh, know what committee you would like to serve on in the coming year, and if you would like to chair a committee uh, or serve on a, as a board position, uh, I sent you a note on that this week. Uh, we'd like to have all the lower roles in place by our April meeting, so we have uh, some time to deal with it, but get back to us um, by the week of March 6th. Our next meeting of the Board Operations Committee is scheduled for Wednesday, uh, March 15th, 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Waterbury Avenue. Questions that can answer them. Question just about the uh, what's the temperature of the capital and your visits at the state level? Is there a, a warm <coughs> and fuzzy well, well, yeah, exactly. so. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Here's the temperature. Uh, the MTA bailout is that's a bad one. Uh, the MTA uh, fix is in the works. Uh, the governor um, had. Um, a fix in her proposal, and they're actively discussing that. So um, I think it's good for us. Uh, if you're going to fix the, what we're, what we're saying, if you're going to fix the MTA, let's fix transit systems across the state. The funding fix. We're in a, a unique position because what we're talking about is all the, the, the great things that we have collectively accomplished, and that you know we're, we're a good investment. So yeah, the temperature's pretty good. good. But you know when they get to the one house budget table. I mean, everything changes because then you realize you got to pay for everything. <laughs> I mean, right now you don't have to worry. You don't have to pay for it. But, but uh, I had uh, coffee with someone the other day, an insider, who said, don't forget, they're sitting on uh, a lot of money. There's a, there's, you know, from the COVID relief still. Uh, unfortunately, rather than keep a rainy day fund, they're inclined to spend it. So I guess that's good news. Uh, where I sit, that's bad news. Just a resident of the state, I'd like to see a little more uh, intelligence here and hide the budget. But in general, good. Nobody's thrown us out of an office yet. I've been watching the hearings, and the, the state is trying to shift responsibility more to the localities than it has in quite a while. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Yeah. I I think they're always trying to shift their right now. You're sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need any more work. I mean, have my back to <laughs> The MTA is getting such a huge chunk of money that I think they got to be nice to the rest of us. You know, well, well, not to, I don't want to go on this rabbit hole, but we asked. Um, the issue for us there, we've been trying for years to get this fixed. The MTA has plenty of mechanisms to fund it. You know, there's payroll tax, there's, a, there's all kinds of taxes down the state. What we're asking for is to, to, to fix, fix our funding stream so that we don't have to every year come knocking. You know, we'd like to see a multi-year approach and enhance streams that fund the upstate accounts. 
that gets real complicated. You're basically asking people to believe it's an axis. Now you're really crossing the line. It's all good, though. It's fun. It's fun. Thank God for Lisa Morrell. I cried for all her. She's swimming up hill. Thank you, Connor. Uh, we'll move on to the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee and Denise Figaro. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee met uh, last week, February 15th, uh, right here, 110 Water Elite Avenue and on Teams. Um, we have uh, four consent agenda <coughs> items today. The first is approval of a contract for Transit Development Plan Consulting Services. The Transit Development Plan is due to be refreshed on the TV guides our work to develop our service network and how new service opportunities can be advanced. A request for proposals was issued and five firms responded. The staff, after reviewing the uh, proposals, uh, recommends an award to Foursquare as the most qualified firm for this work. Um, we have a motion to award a three-year contract with two one-year options to Foursquare Integrated Transportation Planning of Washington, D.C., for an amount not to exceed $1,245,606. So moved. Joe, can I get a second on the resolution? Get the mic. Questions, comments? TDP? I got Jerry CEO okay. for so long. Okay. I take up time. Okay. So I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Okay, our next uh, item is approval of a contract for website support services. Uh, the contract with Navisite for web support services is about to expire, and it's a, new, a new agreement is required. This includes maintenance support services, design changes, and content management administration. To ensure continuity of operations, staff recommends a sole source award to Navisite. Uh, we need a motion to award a one-year contract with four one-year renewals to Navisite LLC of Andover, Massachusetts for an amount not to exceed $634,211. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Denise. Second. 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 Yeah. Website. We need a website. This is our incumbent, right? Right. It's our incumbent. Basically, the consists of the architecture. Yes, they both did. They made it. We like them. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. Okay. Uh, next item is approval of the contract for fuel. Our contract with diesel fuel expires in May, and we've had considerable discussions about fuel uh, because of its volatility, high prices, and the impact it has on our budget. Um, the prices we received from our supplier, Morabito, fell uh, by 45, per, 45 cents per gallon, excuse me, from its average price, and we decided to purchase seven months of fuel through December 2023. Uh, so we need a motion to award a seven-month contract for diesel fuel to take effect June 1st, 2023, to Morabito Energy Products of Binghamton, New York, for an ex uh, expected value of $3 million. $903,540. So moved. Thank you, Jersey. Second. Peter, thank you. Fuel, anybody have any comments? Yeah. Good price. Good work. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah. price. Uh, hopefully, you know, a little different strategy. We only went out seven months, and we'll, we'll keep watching and waiting. Um, give you the impact. The swing is about a half million dollar swing. Is that right, Trish? About a half million dollar swing on 45 cents. So. <laughs> Trish was happy, uh, swung, swung the budget gap, uh, half a million to the positive. But I just want to thank the board. You may not realize how innovative this is, but by you giving us the authority to sort of, you know, move on a dime, we can do this. I mean, there's a lot of trust that I think you, you, you're giving us. And, uh, we appreciate that. I, I think it's worked to our, to our benefit over the course of you know, many years. But, you know, we're, we're within the rules, but well documented what we do, so if anyone were to come and ask, how do you do it, why do you do it this way, and you know, what are the checks and balances, I think it's all there, but the flex, I mean, we don't, we, we get, we usually get an hour of like, to make a decision. So we went from 350 to 
to, to 305, but remember we're at 177. Not the cold yeah. water on it, but we've we've had some real successes by being able to buy on the spot over the last five years or whatever. Well, this I went back and looked. It's trended positively for us for a long, long time. And there are times like there are going to be times you know, we're going to see this big spike up. It doesn't always work smoothly. But it's already gone up since we. Oh, it's already gone back up. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's already gone back up. The seven months, the, the longest thing was that Tanaka. Not quite. I was just curious. No, we bought it in two years. Right, so you could have done that now. If you we could have chose. said 305 for the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're, it was the Todd, Todd Mike, and um, Trish. It'll, they think it'll come down to the four times. I sometimes wonder if they're, if the crystal ball, I don't know how scientific it is, but they say it is. We'll take it. <clears throat> Where's my magic eight ball? I thought Pete had custody. I the chain of custody. has been broken. I'm not sure I dropped it. Okay, all in favor of the uh, new fuel contract say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved. Go on, Denise. Okay, next is a resolution to accept state funding. Never object. Uh, New York State Department of Transportation requires a board resolution to accept state funding for reimbursable expenses. Um, this is capital funding through the Accelerated Transit Capital Program and the Modernization Enhancement Program. Most of this is for bus purchases. Um, we need a resolution to execute an agreement with New York State DOT to accept $9,576,883 in funding. Second motion. Peter, Dan, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Okay, thank you. Um, we have two administrative discussion items. The first, of course, is our monthly management report. My colleagues uh, provided that report. The MRT was under budget for the first time in three years, um, but it's still 26% over budget for the year. Um, Year-to-date customer fare revenue is 27% over budget, and the rail, uh, rents the rail station revenue is 45% over budget. The wages were over budget this month, but for the year, still remain 3% under budget. Uh, workers' compensation is 26% under budget for the year, and we are in a very good financial position. Almost the end of the year. Any questions on that? Okay, um, and then we received the uh, non-financial monthly report from Chris Desney. Uh, the fixed route ridership uh, continues to grow and is up 35% this month uh, and 20% for the year. Star ridership is up 19% for the month and 14% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was 75% and star on-time performance was 81%. Missed trips have trended down to 107 this month, but the headcount issues still remain a, a concern. Uh, there were 16 preventable accidents and 22 non-preventable accidents. And the absentee report uh, uh, shows uh, that we're at 10.4% of work days that were not worked. Any questions on the non-financial report? Okay. No questions, then the next meeting of the committee is March 22nd here at Clinton Marble 8 and on Microsoft Teams. Thank you. Thank you for your report, Denise. Uh, the Committee and Stakeholder Relations Committee, Mike Rashom is going to make the report. Yes, yes. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met last Thursday in person via Microsoft Teams. Staff provided updates on advocacy, customer research, and the monthly communications and community engagement report. CARM provided a summary of advocacy efforts for the 2023 legislative session. Meetings with legislators at both local and state level are underway. Our message of growth and expansion is the central theme of our conversation. John Scherzer provided an update on our customer research work that is being done by our consulting firm, TransPro. 
Our first customer survey was conducted in June 2022. The second phase of research was done in January with more than 400 surveys completed by customers. Customers ranked on-time performance, travel time, frequency, and fair pricing as most important to them. A new performance dashboard will be rolled out by the company to measure more than just ridership and on-time performance. The dashboard will incorporate overall impact on community served. Looking ahead for additional surveys will be conducted with a focus on community value, workforce, customer experience, experience, and paratransit services. Jamie Caslow provided the monthly community engagement and media report. Last month, CDTA earned 15 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio. Stories focused on CDTA's new car sh share program drive, new service into Voorheesville, progress on the Purple Line BRT, and possible expansion into Warren County. Looking ahead, CDTA will hold its annual State of the CDTA on Thursday, March 2nd, and celebrate Transit Worker Appreciation Day on March 18th. The next meeting of the committee will be held on Thursday, March 23rd, 11.30 a.m. here at 110 Water for Me Dev and via Microsoft Teams, unless there's any other questions or comments. Nope, then we'll just roll it to uh, strategic, strategic and Operational Planning Committee, Mike. All right, uh, we met at 12 p.m. last Thursday here at 110 Water for Me Dev. Microsoft Teams. We have uh, one consent agenda item for the board, and that's the adoption of Title VI program. Chris Stesny and Ethan Warren gave an update on the Title VI program. This program is designed to ensure equity when we make major service and operational decisions. We seek to safeguard that service is provided in a non-discriminatory manner. Public participation is accessible to all demographics and meaningful access to transit-related programs and activities are granted to persons with limited English proficiency. The program includes general requirements, a report of investigations, service monitoring standards, definitions, a public particip participation plan, and a limited English pro proficiency plan. As a federal funding recipient, and as a matter of good practice, we comply with Title VI regulations and are required to resubmit our Title VI program every three years. The committee is recommending approval of the 2023 to 2026 Title VI policy. Can I get a motion to approve the Title VI policy? So moved. Second. 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 Peter, thank you. Any, uh, any questions? Is, is that an unfunded mandate? No, no. Uh, it's, it's part of, it's embedded in you know, federal, federal law, so I, I wouldn't call it a mandate. I would focus on um, Mike's comments as a matter of good practice. Um, I think it's incumbent upon <coughs> us to do this type of review and ensure that as we plan and distribute service, it's done in an equitable, an equitable manner. That, um, you know, there's no effort to, to you know, push a community or a community group to the side. Um, and so I, I wouldn't call it a mandate. I'd call it uh, good practice. Question. And this plan is posted on our website as well. Guys, I don't think the, the latest version may not be up there yet, but the current operating one is up there and whether it's up whether new one's there now or it will be, we'll we'll get that thing. Great. So I guess that's a guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's a good practice. And you know if you look at a group structure, say rural I don't know, I guess the only group that kind of really quickly comes to mind are the rural poor. Um, could make an argument, I guess. Um, why would you need more service then? Say that. Well, many people don't understand it. That's why I asked the question. That's but, why I asked. Yeah. Appreciate it. Anything else? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
It's approved. All right. And uh, the committee had one administrative discussion item, and that was a budget update. Uh, Mike Collins gave an update on the development of the fiscal year 24 budget. The composite budget uh, was attached uh, with the uh, committee reports. Our current position is good, and we expect to finish the year ahead of projections. Since submitting our preliminary budget in December, we have increased customer revenue projections to $18 million. We increased our rental air rail station revenue by $1.1 million based on new rates. We are also planning a 7.1% increase in STOA as per the governor's budget. We repositioned a wage line to reflect modest increases for employees, including additional bus operator and maintenance positions for the new Purple Line BRT. We also reduced health insurance projections by $1.1 million. Maintenance services increased by $900,000 due to expiring grant funded warranties for IT services. And we increased the purchase transportation line by $1.4 million due to additional outsourcing. Our budget deficit is now just over $300,000 with a clear path forward to provide a balanced budget for review and approval next month during the board meeting. Uh, the next meeting of the committee will be March 23rd, 12 p.m. here at 110 Waterbury and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions about the committee report? Budget right in the rear view mirror, right, Carl? Yeah, this might be the earliest that we've, uh, at least on record, you know, balanced it. Yeah, 300000 on 1.5. Trish, have fun figuring out where to, you know, snip that. Um, but it's 7.1% uh, so, so if anything more than 7.1%, go back and play with it some more. That's the earliest I can recall having this not buttoned up, but pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's good to have choices. Yeah. Good. So we'll move on to the next item, uh, the CEO report. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, we covered pretty much two-thirds of it, so I'm just going to not pluck it. Pluck here a couple things here to talk about. Um, the ridership Ridership is going up faster than we ever anticipated. Um, so what we're positioning um, our message as with, with our legislative delegation and actually we've been talking to leadership is that you know still is not a budget filler for us. Still it's still is not you know something we need to close the budget gap. It's it's what we need to do more. Um, and we really do need to do more. There are people who want more service, there are people who want more options. Um, I think the time is right for us to do that. I understand the people issue. We need people to operate, we need people to fix it, we need people to support it. But um, right now, we're in a position that we might not be in any time in our you know, immediate future. Or we can we can respond. Money's not the issue. So um, we're developing a, a couple of options and ways to do that. But um, that's good news. Uh, we talked about the budget work. It continues. I kind of made play of a you know, $300,000 gap. Trisha McGann can, can fill it easily, but this is the time sort of where you're getting everybody's priorities straight, you're looking at the capital budget, you're, you know, making sure that, that the different projects that we have underway are, are funded and, and can continue. So there's lots of back behind the scenes work that uh, people in finance are doing, and, and that'll continue through um, March. Uh, our work to merge. Uh, my new title, by the way, is Director of Mergers and Acquisitions. <laughs> pretty much what I've been doing for the last... <laughs> Several months. It's going well. Um, everywhere we turn, there is support. Um, we just need to do one one last thing, and we're pretty close. We, we're meeting with, uh, well, I'm meeting with a subcommittee of the Board of Supervisors tomorrow, weather permitting. Um, some sleet and snow down here, but there's eight inches of snow projected in the months. Yeah. We're going to have to get used to that. Um, but there's not much more for us to do. We've checked off all the boxes. We've, the hardest part was the employee part. We think we have sort of a path forward on that. It's, it's a couple dozen employees. Um, at the end of the day, the, the service that we'll assume is 60% seasonal. If you look at really their deployment, 
it just goes up in the summer months. It's that summer trolley service that's quite successful. Um, so we have to get our, our hands around that. But assuming all this works out, we're anticipating that the Board of Supervisors will um, vote to join the authority in the next month or two. Uh, if that happens, we'll begin a transition plan. Uh, there will probably be no significant changes right off the get-go. But we're already working on it. The maintenance and Dave Williams and Lance are already – we're um, – getting the trolleys ready for the summer season. They usually do that, but we're doing it on their behalf. They've got some lift issues, for example, that they haven't been able to pay. The one technician, uh, and even, even that, I'm not I'm sure if these guys would even call them. Well, their one technician hasn't been able to resolve this lift issue. Our, our guys will figure that out and fix it. Um, their their, their uh, regular route buses uh, are in various stages of repair or disrepair. We're already um, in the process of setting up a system where we can we can resolve that. So we're acting as if a lot of this is already happening. So uh, little by little is is a wide path. So if all goes well, we'll go from four <coughs> counties to six counties. Carl, can I test the, yeah. the increase in stow? Is that tied at all to? Uh, oh, sorry, Jim. Is that tied at all to uh, the potential merging of Lauren? No, we'll assume they're stow. So we'll have more stow at the end. Of that. I don't remember the stow line. Just under a million. Yeah, so our stow will go up a million. There, there's, you bring up an interesting point. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies that we have to get into. For example, right now the way stow is distributed to small systems is different. The way it's distributed, to, uh, they're, they're called an unspecified. Their money goes into a pot, and then it gets divvied up. So what we'll be working on is a system where that will be added to our solar account. So we're actually going to come out of this with even more, well, if we work this right, even more so. So it's still some curves to get us through, but, and then, you know, Amanda's already been, Starting to work, and we have to get the federal government to stamp all this because we're going to take all their assets and they'll become part of our assets. And almost every one of their assets is purchased with federal federal money. And in my world, that sounds really easy, but in the legal and government world, it, this will not not be easy. I'm sure. Uh, so, Carl, based on what you said, could you anticipate? No, uh, we think we can smooth that out a little. You know, we're, the Lance is already talking about perhaps we, you know, send our newer vehicles there, take their old vehicles back here, and do what these guys do. Literally, we had no vehicle, and maybe they never go back. You know, we'll see. Um, at the end of the day, it's not a lot of vehicles. No, they have 18 total vehicles. Um, of those 18. There's roughly five for fixed route, seven trolleys, and uh, seven air transit vehicles. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very, very small. It's small. It's small. Yeah, you know, the challenge will be um, to manage the community and the community expectations. Community expectations there are, are I can tell you, already higher than they were in Montgomery County. Yeah. They think we're, you know, we're going to be able to fix everything. Do you have comparative stats like the one, the press of one, I think that. Uh, Talked about with the on time and all the things. Uh, I don't have them handy. Yeah, um, I mean, are they comparable to what we've been able to achieve? I'm, I'm susceptible <laughs> of them because the, their, their technology, that's where they need the most help. There is no technology. So everything is gathered by hand. So if they told me their on time performance is 60%, right. yeah. uh, I'm not sure I believe that. Uh, the, they don't have, um, the first thing we'll do is upgrade the fare box. They're using. Uh, what, what, what year? Circa. <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> I mean, they're secure, but they're not gathering any information or data that we're yeah. useful. Yeah. So the data collection. Their their communication system is. It's a two way radio. It's a two way radio. Um, stroke a lot. Some of you remember several years ago when we um, expanded the radio uh, system and our technology. We um, have a 
Malcolm McGregor. McGregor. We, yeah, at the time, what do we need Malcolm McGregor for? Well, it was really tied into the Saratoga <coughs> service to make sure we have the reach that actually by lock, right, will take us well into Warren County. I don't know if you know, we decided to take on at the end of the lake if, if we have to do that. Um, we're set there, too. So their system only covers Warren County, right? Not it Washington covers too, well. It, tech, it covers Warren County and Washington oh, County, but okay. Washington County is a series of service agreements, so we will treat it the same. <clears throat> We've, uh, John and I uh, had the pleasure of meeting with some people from Washington County. Uh, it's just a different outlook on everything. Yep. We're talking about you know, um, I think you know, could you do a universal access agreement for a group of farmers? I mean, I, I, I say that half in jest. They were serious. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a different approach. I think that we'll just keep some sort of. They use right now municipal agreements. You know, we're not a municipality, so we, we use MOUs. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. I, I agree with you, George. Yeah. I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, my worry, um, in all honesty, is that if Scott Sopcich, who's been a long time general manager there, retires and we don't do something, within a matter of two years, uh, there is no service. Or they're struggling to find someone to operate the trial. Uh, and there's opportunity there. You know, John and I met with a couple people the other day. Just doing what we do, there's opportunity. Uh, they have several large employers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've already talked to someone from Angel Dynamics, who I've known from the governor's office. Large presence. Uh, the hospital, who's an affiliate member of Albany Medical Center, who's a large partner of ours. And then the, the, the supermarket chains. And then there's ours, but just doing what we do, I think there's opportunity. And it is the right thing. And uh, closing the gap between uh, South Glens Falls and Saratoga along the 9 is... Especially with workforce development. Yep. Yeah. Panoramic Community College has talked to us for years. This would be a way, I think, for us to accommodate that. And, and the school districts. Um, that's a whole other discussion. So, film at 11, don't see any, any um, minefields right now. But it's a new group, and we're not used to dealing with people in Warren County. We speak the same language, but sometimes they have a little bit of an accent. <laughs> I'm trying to find the right words. I'm looking at Peter Bly. Yeah, I, I worked up there. It, it, it is a whole different feel once you cross the dogs. Yeah. It is a, a, a separate feel from the capital district. So it's going to be an interesting. I think you, you hit on the head. It's, it's sort of winning over the crowd, the audience. Yep. So. I think we're good at it, but we'll see. What else? Uh, don't forget. The, you know, we uh, are set to raise the, um, the parking rates at the rail station on April 3rd, and the uh, information campaign is underway. Uh, as you would expect, uh, everyone's cheering. Um, everyone wants to pay more. Uh, it's a subtle increase. It's, in general, it's basically $2 uh, a day, a day. So if you park there for a day, you can pay $2 more. And we've checked quickly. It's, it's within you know, what, what the market is telling us. Good news on the TDP, it's great that, that the board approved that. To refresh your memory, that really, next to the strategic plan, is probably the most important you know, exercise that we go in and we engage in. We haven't updated the TDP in several years. It's going to be updated just before the uh, pandemic. So it, it, it's actually good that we're not, to, haven't done it because a lot of the services change. You know, the boarding patterns are different. Uh, the focuses are a little bit different. So I think it's it's perfect that we do it now. And, and Foursquare um, is, is new to us. They've done, done one project, uh, the, the bustling study, on something else. Uh, but but they're, they're relatively new to us, and we think a, a fresh set of eyes would be good. Um, lastly, uh, or don't forget, the state of CDTA is March 2nd. Um, we've got that um, pretty much planned. Um, several videos being, being shot. To, to, to support uh, the work that we do. Uh, and I think our invite was, was pretty high. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, a lot of people want, want to be there. So uh, doing something right. Last but not least, 
Um, I've been I've mentioned several times in the past few months that we have been working with a consultant on tangible development, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, a couple of things have been going on, uh, but, but right now we're in the middle of, a, of uh, an organizational assessment uh, where employees at all levels of the organization are telling us uh, from their perspective uh, what they think. Um, pretty open-ended here. Um, what, 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 we have no idea when we're going to get back. Um, and it's, it's gotten pretty good penetration, right, Cal? I mean, a lot of focus group people. Yeah, we have, uh, I think, three or four more focus groups um, left to do. And then after the focus groups, anyone that, that didn't attend one of those will be eligible to do a one-on-one -on -one with uh, a representative from Tangible Development if they choose to do so. Once that is over, then they will take all the information with Siena uh, Institute, and they will go through everything. And Couple months, then we'll have a report sometime, probably mid-summer. And we've done a lot of uh, awareness building uh, with the professional staff. I remember we talked about that. So what we have done is we lined up Tangible to come in here um, at the March board meeting. So more details to follow. What we're looking is maybe uh, try to get the March board meeting done quickly. As I'll, as I guess on, on the you know, service awards we, we have. Um, but if we can do that, we'll block out a half an hour, 45 minutes right after the meeting. They can give you an update and give you a little sampling of some of the, um, uh, the training. Uh, maybe even engage with a little bit of the training, like a, a quick version of it. So you get an idea of what we have been doing um, and what the assessment is looking to sort of get into. Uh, rather than us talking about it, I thought it would be good for them to come and talk with you about what they're doing. This is tough work. Uh, this is tough work. As, as some of you know from your own uh, organizations, it's tough work. It's not for the faint of heart. Is this a what do you like about us? <coughs> yeah, but it's it's not like what do you like about us. It's sort of you're coming at it from, help me Cal, from, from your... I think what most people struggle with with this type of work is it's not as tangible as, you know, how much of a pay increase would you like? What kind of benefits are you interested in? When it's very um, feeling-based. Do you feel supported? Do you feel like you work somewhere that is inclusive and respects everybody and supports differences and encourages differences? And so I think for a lot of people that are, are much more used to you know, numbers or you know, return on investment, or it's very hard to do that with this type of work. It's much more touchy feely, which people love. <laughs> but. but everything comes from your personal perspective. So it's going to be very much, very, I think, a lot deeper than do you like it here. I think it, it, it in fact, I mean, it, it plays into some of the recruitment retention issues that we've consistently struggled, right? So from a learning perspective, what are the boots on the ground telling about us and others within the organization of how we're doing? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And I would tell everybody to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we may not like what we see. Right. Sure. Yeah. But that's okay. And this is in, in demand from we can't keep the workforce and things like that. <clears throat> no, I, no, I think this is a, is a response really to where we are as a society, where we are as a company, um, and where we want to go. I mean, the company, if you look at the company today, it's dramatically different than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. 30% of our population is minority. Uh, if not more. More. Uh, women uh, make up half of the company. That, that was not that way. So we want to make sure that we're thoughtful and reflective of the changing workforce, the changing ideas, the changing thoughts, the changing opinions and wants and needs. I mean, this is this, you know. But again, we're not going to change things overnight. But I, I don't know how you can do it if you don't know what people think. 
need to know what people think. Our organization went through the same exercise with the same yeah. consultants, and uh, the questions are sort of that, that you go through the survey are, are pretty straightforward but provocative. Um, and they create an awareness just going through the survey. So by, by the end result, you're thinking about how you react to some of these questions. And I, even though it may be surprising to some, it, uh, uh, I think going through the exercise uh, creates an awareness that allows you to accept and, and understand. But it's a, like you said, it's not then, okay, let's not put in this. It, it gives you a, a sense or a roadmap at the moment of, of what you need to improve on. So I found it very helpful. And they'll provide some suggestions, you know, for us to consider. Um, it's a good partnership, you know, they're, they're, they're partnering with the Seattle Research Institute, who's pretty good at the, uh, the depth sounding. Um, we're a different company at the, man I'll tell you, at the management level, we're different than we were before we started. I can tell you, we're changing things, but we got, at least got people thinking, got people with better appreciation for some of the issues that surround the economic model. And uh, Dave and Denise know we're, we're uh, members of a, of a larger group at APTA that, that is, you know, meets regularly um, to talk about these issues and to, 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 to work together, to support each other. And I, I jumped on one of their calls recently and it was just interesting to hear basically everyone's, we're basically marching in the same direction. We're, we're not all in sync with what we're doing and what we're doing, but everyone's doing some version of what we're doing. So I felt pretty good about that. You know, at least we're not off, you know, by ourselves. We're certainly not way behind the industry. Yeah, I think just the awareness is going to be very important. Yeah. Yeah, our company did a similar thing as yours, and similar to what you were speaking to, and you know the tangible outcome. This is like a couple of years in the making. Are the the reflection of your hiring practices and and what comes out of that, and it, it takes more than just like an awareness. It really is like from an overall awareness around the company. It, it's it's pretty awesome. Really glad we're doing that. Well, I think that's what we're hoping for is by. You know, just the fact that we're asking the questions, to me, as an employee, would make me feel good. Like, you know, they, they actually care about how I feel, um, you know, why I work here, what's important to me, things like that. So um, I think it, it starts there, and then hopefully we'll, you know, drive a change. I mean, because it's everything from if an employee doesn't feel good about where they're working, not only does it impact them, but they're not going to refer other people, and they're going to talk to other people that work here and maybe influence them. And so it's just a whole, um, you know, it just goes from person to person to person. So it's definitely not something we can ignore. Um, and, and people's wants and needs are so different today than what they were five years ago. And, you know, how they want to live their life is a lot different. So we have to change with the times. I think a huge hurdle is that the employees know that you're sincere. Absolutely. So far, we haven't cashed in any chips, right? Um, the hard part is going to be they generate a report. The report has, I don't know, six key recommendations. Two years later, how many of the six have you addressed? So, so far, I think we get a pass. We don't get a pass once we have the results and you know we're being asked to change a few things. And how long do you expect before you expect to see any fruits, reports, or? Um, the reports will probably be mid-summer. Um, you know, we'll be done in the next month, we'll say, and then it goes to tangible. They sort some of the data. And then they turn everything over to CNN, which then I think takes two, three months. Um, and then they finalize the report and put it into um, uh, something that makes sense to us and is, um, you know, something that we can work by. And they include their recommendations 
Um, and they'll start with the low hanging fruit and then move on to bigger and better things, more sweeping change. Um, but we're hoping probably sometime July or August. Did you plan on them coming here? They're going to come here in March, next March 4th. So I'm hoping that it'll get you more information if you can block out a little time right after the meeting. And I think when you hear from them, you'll, you'll get a, a better idea of what Kelly has to do. They'll, they'll, they'll fill in some blanks. But oh, they're, they're pretty good. They've worked with a lot of companies here. Different, not everything like us. I think Seth, Seth Q, right, yeah. was, was like, like us. They've done some work at CDPHP, but that's really been on job descriptions. They've done some work with senior management at Home and Med. Um, a lot of the, the awareness stuff that we've done, they, they, they did it all at Med. And we talk about senior staff. Senior staff, there's like 150 people. Um, but, you know, um, they're good. Um, they're good. I think they're the right choice for us. The toughest thing has been the logistics because we have people all over the place who work all different shifts, who don't have email, and, you know, just trying to, you know, have focus groups at times where they can attend one, or, you know, if they don't have internet access, where can we set them up? And, you know, we, we pose some logistical issues that Tangible has never even dealt with before. So, um, that's just hard to get in front of our folks. We can't put them all in a room. That just never happens. So, I mean, you all know this. This is a tangible thing, but it's, it's also a note for everything we do. You know, the term desk employee, like the majority of our people have never and never will sit at a desk. They don't, they don't open a computer screen to get their information. You know, they come here and do these various jobs that we recognize them for. So getting them to sort of focus on this kind of stuff or, or even employee engagement type of things is very difficult. So Tangible has certainly gotten some eye-opening experiences working with us. That's also why we engaged uh, TransPro uh, to help us on the long-term just general engagement stuff because they're transit professionals. We don't have to explain to them the fact that we don't have desk employees. Um, you know, desk employees are the people sitting around the room, basically, and then you know, a few others. But the you know, majority of our people don't. And, and even the survey itself is challenging. It's, I, I read it. It's, it's, it's fine. It's really not written for um, some of the people who work here. That's why the focus groups are so important. You know, they can sit with people and talk things through. I don't understand that. What does that mean? We're really hopeful that we glean a lot of information from the focus groups. Because, you know, frankly, what is that? The, the survey stuff, the, you know, the management staff, staff fine, but you don't want the results to be skewed by 100 management people in a 700 person company. So, Kelly and her staff are, are leading the way. It's a difficult undertaking. I mean, it's been way more difficult than I thought. You know, I understand the field people. Are you getting a good response from that? I think so. Yeah, I was right. More so. It was in the past where people people didn't want to get involved in any of that stuff. I'm just curious what that's. And generally they don't. Yeah. You know, still people just want to, I don't know, I guess it's good and bad, right? They just want to come to work and do their job and they're not interested in this stuff. Right. But they have, you know, we really need them to be interested. So we're doing all kinds of outreach to make sure people at least have a shot at doing they didn't do it, they don't want to do it, that's, that's fine. I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. But hey, look, if we have to go back and do it again two years from now, we'll do it again. Let's, let's start somewhere. That concludes my report and Kelly's report. <laughs> Very good report, Carl. But I don't know, we sort of followed from me to me, but hit it out of the park. <laughs> 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 Forty had it after forty years. So. Hey, every now and then, right? Every now and then. Every now and then. I was on the question.
Sure. I'm sorry. Oh, not to jinx anything. I haven't been pretty good on. Uh, we got a report coming. Uh, <laughs> we got, I don't know, we probably have about 10, 8 or 10 in the, in the hopper that we have to report to. It's probably over okay. three weeks. You know, and I guess back. we don't really need to do the report again. I, I just kind of like to send people out. <laughs> I have my own employee sheet. I like to keep track of this stuff. It's, it's definitely lessened. Uh, but for us, the, the problem is five days. You know, I, I have a question on that because I, I don't know the answer to this, and I need to find out the answer to my other job. Um, <laughs> when the federal state of the emergency goes by the wayside, does the five days go by the wayside? No. I have not heard yet. And that's legal and HR on that one. I'll tell you what, though, we will research that. That is yeah, a, that is a much. huge thing. I know. So yeah. Because right now it's it's it, it's still yeah. hurting us. Let's die. I won't say killing, but it's hurting us. Like Gary, I mean, any given day, you've got three or four people here. I would imagine. Correct. And there are five days. There's no no negotiation. They're, they're out. For a while, a lot of people that we had on the list weren't experiencing any symptoms, and that has changed. I would say over the past four to five months. Um, the people that we do have out, granted, you know, most of them are vaccinated and boosted. They don't end up in the hospital, but they're sick. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, we don't want them back yeah. <laughs> until at least five days, which, you know, goes to the issues that we're having. I mean, they're, um, they're not sitting at home saying, I can come to work, like, I feel good, just let me come back. And we used to have to say, no, you know, you, you need to stay out at least five, and it was unfortunate. But now we're like, please stay out for at least five because you sound horrible. Um, so all of ours, I would say, are have been pretty pretty sick. Yeah, we can experience the same thing. Let's get the sick. Let's get worse. We'll still check it out. No, oh, I'm curious. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, mean, I don't like that. So you, you don't we receive, have to do it. We would receive employees back after they've had the flu for three days, and they're sitting next to right. all of us, right? So yeah. I'm just, I, it would right. help everyone if it yeah. wasn't a five day so, so, so one thing that I really didn't talk about, and you may have noticed it in, in the trip cuts, the trip cuts last month were about 100. It's a dramatic reduction, but it's been going down actually the last couple of months. Um, and this month might be a little higher, but not much. Um, it's a combination of things going on. We've been able to pop the head count up, so inject and keep some of the, the, the new class. It, this sounds funny. We, we, we lose everybody every single time, but it's felt that way sometimes. So the, the retention is a little bit better. We have changed um, some of our management, um, how we do this in the operating departments. I think that has been successful. And then it just seems like there's a general, I don't know, we're over this. We, we, can, we're, we don't need to do these types of things anymore, little things that are buried in the organization. But it's had a, a, a really good impact on service reliability. Because trip cuts are, are reliability. You know, when you cut trips, someone, someone somewhere is going to be injured. So we've gotten that down from you know, 500, 600 down to 100. We're also talking about, we'll bring this to you at some time, sort of a, new, a reset, like what is really zero? You know, 100 might actually be zero. Uh, 100 might be a system of this size. You're going to have that in, in, in a month anyway. Um, so why are you getting all worried about it? Get the 500 in, or you got a problem, or, or something of the sort. But it's good work in the operating departments, especially. I wouldn't ask you because I know you're reading, and I'm not. I don't want to go deep, but we talked about with the, with the uh, rider surveys and all that. The next level would be impact. So, what, what are? And this is kind of complete ignorance. What are the what are the metrics that would, or do we have any sense of those metrics that would be used to determine impact more than just rider? impact? Uh, a little more. I don't know. That's a, I think it was economic a impact. Better. So the next term is community value. Yeah. Is that kind of where you're going. Yeah, the difference between a ridership and community. Yeah. <clears throat> so community value, which I brought up in the stakeholder meeting, is more like what we did pre-pandemic. 
not everyone was on the board yet, though, but we brought in <clears throat> different sectors. Bring in healthcare, bring in education, bring in financial, and start to get a pulse in the community and how valuable this is. What's missing? What do we need? Kind of going back to the message Carver was talking about and aligning the services that people are asking us for so they can go through the message of the advocacy level so we can go through business development and all the other pieces that make the, the CDTA go. But for the most part, <clears throat> it's going to be bringing in, I want to say 50 or less, probably less, 25 to 50 people who are going to come and give opinions. Some of them might be online, might bring people into a group. Basically, a large community scale focus group. So we know what a customer thinks, now we know what partners, service providers, municipalities. If, if, if some of the members that were here several years ago, remember, we started to dabble into this with our partners at Fact Finders and got some really interesting results. And then the pandemic kind of caught us and they've since downsized and retired. And now we have transpo who can do this kind of thing. But that's the next level for us to look at. You know, what, what are we missing? You know, what, what, what are the gaps here between what we think you want and what you, you need? Um, that sort of like the engaged employee stuff. Be careful. Uh, you, know, you may not like what you hear, but that's okay. And you can't get better if you don't know what's wrong. So a lot more work there than we've ever done before as well. Keeps job busy. Any other comments or questions from the board before we adjourn? If not, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Dan, second by Mike. We're adjourned. The next meeting is on March 29th at 12 noon right here. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.